Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm so excited to be live with you guys again this morning, and I've got two great guests all the way from the lockdown city of the world. No, not that bad, but from Johannesburg. We've got the Tafara with me. I've got Jen and Stuart with me all the way from Joburg. So welcome, guys. Welcome. Hey. <laughs> Let's start with... Good to be with you, Sean. Good, man. Let's start with Thanks, Tafara. Sean. Tell us what's happening, man. How are you? What's going on in Joburg? Oh, man. We are on uh, day five now, I think. Day four? Yeah, one yeah. of the two. <laughs> and uh, we lose track, it's, huh? it's just been interesting reconnecting with everybody, reconnecting with the family. I think it's a great opportunity, uh, to be honest, to just kind of spend time with the family and um, just spend time with the Lord and uh, just have an intimate time of fellowship with God. Who knows, a book or two may come out of this. <laughs> ah, that sounds good, man. That sounds good. Steve, you and Jen, how's the egg news? Well, actually, a little bit in shock because um, Stuart said this is a live stream. I'm like, what's he doing? What's he? Do what's he doing? I thought we were just going to be chatting, and now now you're streaming live. So hello. Hello. <laughs> that with my earring on. <laughs> That's good. You got the right <laughs> earring. I try you... to leave. I try to leave at the last. And I, no, no, you you take this. I'm, I'll, I'll just. Um, but hello, here I am. That's good. You look good <laughs> so for lockdown, man. Um, <laughs> Thank you, man. It's amazing, amazing what you can do. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. <laughs> and you, Safari, you're also beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so good, man, man guys. Yeah, no, we doing well, eh, Sean? Yeah, great opportunity, man. Uh, as the forest says, to connect, to slow down, to reset. Um, you don't uh, plan these times. Nobody would plan this kind of uh, uh, reset, but uh, we do. And so how do we make the most of it so we can take advantage? Because we really do think and believe clearly this is an, uh, an advantageous opportunity for us as a church, you know. Amazing, man. Yeah. What, a, what a time to be alive, right? What a time. Yeah. So I want to yeah. Sorry, sorry. Did you go tea? I'm here. <laughs> now, what I want to say to everybody that's joining us right now, you're welcome to send us some questions. Uh, we're going to be talking about God and judgment and sickness and this time that we're living in. A lot of people are posting things that are very negative and we want to do the opposite. We want to say stuff that is true, that is truth, that's not fake news. Um, and it's not about politicians, it's not about uh, a bunch of TikTok videos. That's all good, that's all good. But, uh, <laughs> but we want to post something today and share something that's life, because every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God is life to us, right? And uh, it's better than food, much better. Um, and so we want to get that going today. So I want to encourage guys, be part of it, if you're at home or, well, you're at home, you're not at work. But if you're at home, type something, send us something to take part in this discussion today. So, well, thank you, everybody. Okay, so I want to jump straight in. Um, you know that at the end of the world conspiracy thing that's going on a lot um, and about God being the author of, of, of all of this, using this to get him us closer or judging the world. Um, I want to jump in from there. What is your opinion? What is the word saying in your life? What have you been teaching your people? Um, how do you guys feel about that? So, Tafara, you kick it off. Uh, tell us, what do you feel about that? Yeah, um, I think, you know, looking at the scriptures, uh, we know that, uh, you know, God's judgment fell on Jesus. Uh, the Bible says in John 12, uh, this is Jesus speaking in verse 30. In fact, verse 31, he says, Now this is the judgment of the world. Uh, now the ruler of this world will be cast out, you know, talking about the devil. And uh, also talking about a judgment that was uh, 
uh, on us before Jesus, you know, uh, uh, went to the cross. So there was indeed a judgment. You know, sometimes when we teach about grace, a lot of people think that we are saying God just kind of, uh, you know, turned a blind eye on sin and just, you know, kind of swept everything under the rug and said, okay, now you're free to do whatever you want. They don't realize that God actually did everything according to uh, his true nature, which is just. Our God is a just God. And uh, he actually did it uh, according to uh, his just. So the first thing that was there was there was a judgment. You know, scripture says in Romans 3 verse 23, for all have sinned and have all fallen short of the glory of God. So the judgment was that uh, because of what Adam did, uh, every man was born uh, a sinner. You know, you didn't have to do something to become a sinner. That was the judgment uh, that was passed. And in God's yeah. mercy, if you look out through uh, history, in the Old Testament, even before Jesus came, God in his mercy said, you know what? I still love my children so much. I don't want them to pay the penalty of this sin. I'm going to ask them to even get a fat and ram, to get an animal, a turtle dove, uh, so that this turtle dove and this fat and ram can die in their place. So God still, you know, uh, came up with a system of, of grace and mercy, even from the Old Testament. So we see that God is a God of love, uh, of mercy, uh, and of grace, even from Genesis all the way to Come Revelations, on. you know. And so uh, Jesus says in John 12, verse 32, and if I am lifted up from the earth, talking about, you know, the death that he would die. That's what it says in verse 33. Lifted up from this earth, talking about him being on the cross. He says, I will draw all, if you're reading in the King James, it would say, I will draw all men. But, you know, if you look at the word man, they, it's italicized, which means that the translators edited it in to try and bring context, but they actually messed it up a little bit because Jesus was talking about judgment. He said, if I'm lifted up on the cross, I will draw all judgment to myself. Come and on. you and I know that Jesus drew all judgment to myself, to himself, sorry. Uh, all judgment that was supposed to come to us went to him on the cross. And uh, it wasn't a pretty death that he died on the place between 12 noon and 3 p.m. There was darkness all over the earth. If you read Isaiah 52, yeah. verse 14, he said his face, his body was so disfigured, he didn't even look like a human being uh, because he had taken upon his body all the sin that would torment mankind, all the judgment uh, that would come on man, all the sickness and disease that would, you know, plague mankind. He took it on his every cancer, every tumor, every sickness, every virus. He took it on his body. And right at the end, he said these words, it is finished, come which on. means pain. Uh, uh, if you look it up in the Greek, in the, in the, in the, in the Greek, that word is tetelid in full. The, the penalty for sin was paid by Jesus. When he went to the cross, he didn't just make one big deposit. Yeah. And now we have to keep up with monthly installments. No, he didn't. <laughs> he paid it in full. So there's yes. no longer any judgment left in God. God is satisfied. It satisfied uh, God so much that if you look in the book of Hebrews, which, by the way, is all about showing us how everything was done by Jesus at the cross legally from a legal perspective that Jesus did it above board. Nothing was swept under the rug. Jesus did it and he obtained eternal redemption for us. And this redemption, I mean, is eternal. Come what on. that means is it lasts forever. So God is not in a bad mood. God is not, you know, angry at humanity. We are in the dispensation of grace. Uh, the judgment of God went on to Jesus on the cross. There is a coming future uh, of recompense, but you and I live in the day of grace where we get to enjoy everything that Jesus paid for on the cross. So if there is one thing I can assure, uh, and it is for you to know that God is not judging the world. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. He judged yeah. Jesus. And uh, mm -hmm. Jesus paid the price, and uh, it is it was praise God. And now we can live in, in freedom and liberty, where the Spirit of the Lord is. There's, there's freedom and there's liberty. So God is sure. pleased with us. Praise God. Hey, that's praise such God good Jesus. news, man. God, Jesus that is God. good news. Amen. So good. Uh, Stu, tell me, awesome, you got it. What do you feel? What's going on? You're into Fora Talk about this. I know that you've got a, 
uh, a good word on that as well. So uh, share with us, please. Well, I just want to say this, um, that when Jesus came, he clearly said, I didn't come to condemn the world, but that the world through me would be saved. And that's not just that we'd go to heaven one day, but that we'd experience the full salvation of what he was going to do on the cross. And uh, it's amazing if we don't have a right understanding of the nature and the character of God, and we put on the wrong lenses, we see God, everything that goes wrong, we then begin to think that's his character or his nature because he's angry and now he's going to punish. And, and I'm starting to realize just what Tafara said, if God took so much time uh, in, in the fullness of time to punish Jesus, exactly like Tafara said, uh, openly, publicly, completely, then uh, there's nothing, nothing outstanding. There's no more punishment needed. Uh, but uh, the devil goes around, you know, he wants to do all the destruction, all the death, all the killing division, and yet people still think that's somehow God. And I think that's the biggest deception for me, is how well, the devil does stuff, and then people think, well, God's punishing the earth. And you think, well, have you not seen what Jesus did? Uh, that wasn't a small thing. That was the biggest thing, and it was a complete thing for all eternity. And, um, and so what we want to do is make sure that clearly, where people understand the character and the nature of God. So um, that, that's our heart, you know, that's what we really believe. Uh, and um, I'm just so excited that uh, truth comes through and that the devil always gets exposed. Uh, and uh, when people start realizing the nature and the character of God, wow, man, then we can start believing what God's got for us, which is complete healing. Um, yeah, that's uh, honestly, I, I just think it's amazing. And one word, coronavirus, and people are scrambled around the world. It's like, it's yeah. like this is this is the ultimate. It doesn't. It's like the killer virus. People can die from it, just like the, uh, and TB and malaria. But uh, we haven't lost our minds over that. Uh, but somehow, because of the media, because of the whole world doing this, uh, even Christians have thought this is if you get uh, Corona. I mean, it's the end. Actually, no, it's a disease. Jesus has paid for it on the cross. Come on. So we have the same access to the same healing for cancer, for disease, for TB, for leprosy. And so, um, I, I mean, I just think that this is a time for our own hearts to be shaken free from lies and from doubt and unbelief. So we can actually come back to a pure, simple devotion to the finished work of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, that is yeah. so true. It's so true. I think that there is an opportunity yeah. for us as children of God right now to show forth the difference. The difference in con. Uh, in connection with where we at with lockdown with the disease going around i'm not saying we'd be stupid uh there are some people who are just they their faith is based on on uh, um, their own arrogancy so they don't really have uh, the faith they it's a thin th th faith i'm struggling with the words there uh, it's something that they've heard somebody say before yeah. so the name sure. it claim it frame it type of uh, scenario so they're going out there so we're not washing our hands we're not doing this this is a a, a man-made sickness or whatever and and they're operating from a place of not being um being wise right but the context is we've got to show the world as true um, mature children of god that we are not living in fear that our God is with us. We don't rely on our good uh, good deeds. We're relying on Him. We stand on a firm foundation that's Jesus Christ. We know and we are not double-minded about that. James 1, a uh, double-minded man is unstable in all his ways, right? So we cannot have that. The world has got to see something different yeah. with us, not a fearful church. Uh, as soon as you were mentioning about the statistics or other sicknesses, we know that there's a child dying in Africa of malaria every minute. Every minute, there's somebody dying of malaria. I think the statistics for last year was yeah. 404,000 yeah. people died in Africa and around the world of malaria. Mm -hmm. So the statistics are crazy. Uh, yeah. Flu kills at least 60 to 70,000 people every year. Normal flu. Uh, I'm not... I'm not trying to go against yeah. Corona in the context of that we say don't do this, don't be, uh, don't be safe. No, 
but the fear that's connected to this is greater than the virus. We have this fear thing that's controlling people. It's controlling the church. Yeah. And that's not supposed to be that way. He's not given us a spirit of fear, right. but of love, power, and a sound mind. Wow. I see churches running like crazy in fear and, uh, and, and double-minded about who our Father is. We have a Father in heaven. And he um, has given us authority on this earth, but we're not seeing the church fully operated in that. Uh, so I want to ask this question. What is our role right now so as children of God? What do we, uh, how, how do, how do we need to handle this? What do we, what do we need to do? What, what would you guys suggest? Tafara, let's go with you. Um, you know, uh, for me, yeah. yeah, Jane, okay. go, 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 go. Please go for it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sean, I, I don't know if this is going to differ with what you um, what you believe, but I'm going to say it anyway because it's good to hear different sides. Um, I've been listening to what the, the prophets have been saying just um, a, around the world. You know, people like Chuck Pierce and Cindy Jacobs and Sean Bolts and um, just getting a picture of, of what's being said. And generally, um, I think the other person was Chris and it was mentioned, and it seems to be Heidi Baker. The whole thing was um, there was an awakening that was going to come to the body of Christ, and you don't need an awakening unless you've fallen asleep. And I think this is not, like you've said, it's not the hand of God because um, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But we see with the story of Joseph that God uses these things Amen. that were intended for evil for good and um, so um i think what's happening to the body of christ is that we are we are actually seeing what stuff we're made of and some of us are running because um there isn't that depth of relationship with mm -hmm. god because we have been distracted we have been focused and living pretty much just like um the world in a sense of of what's valuable to us um, and living without an eternal mindset mm -hmm. Um, just building for this um, side of eternity, and, and that is true of, of the church um, in many respects. So I think what this has done is it's really shaken us. Um, yeah. It's been a shaking for the body of Christ. God has allowed it in his, in his mercy because we need to strengthen what remains. Um, the things that can't be shaken are the things that we need to strengthen in our lives right now. Mm -hmm. So what is, what is remaining in this time? Those are the things we need to build on and strengthen, especially as church leaders going forward um, into the future, is we need to um, be able to um, teach our, our people and, and equip them to, to be able to, um, to stand strong in a situation mm -hmm. like this um, and yeah, just encourage them in their faith. I guess we try and do that all the time, but this has really been like a real-life lesson. Um, the other thing is... Um, when we went into this time, um, we started praying and we got um, one of um, the, the young ladies prophesied in our church that it was a time just change. She just started seeing wheels uh, spinning and she looked up at the wheels in Ezekiel and she just, she actually um, saw that it was a time of advantageous change for the body of Christ. And I do believe it is. It seems like there's great darkness that's covering the earth, but it is that Isaiah 60 time for the church to actually arise and shine like never before. And God yeah. started telling us the whole of last year that it's time for Isaiah 60. It's time to arise and shine. Now we're in. And, and if I can just give you a practical example of that. Um, we, we have a... We, we know of a person who lives in a situation where they, there's a lot of children around and they cannot practice social distancing. You can't teach a, a toddler about social distancing or no. a three-year-old. So all these children are playing together where they live because of the environment that they live in. And he's taken this opportunity, which he's never done before, is actually to just sit with these children and to teach them about Jesus. And so he's oh. been ministering to these children. So something's been birthed in him. And suddenly now he's a kids minister and um, he's, he's, he's amazing with what he's coming up with. And he's been teaching these children that Jesus loves them. And he said they are so hungry. So the five, five little ones have, are now, have now received Jesus mm. and are coming, they're coming 
to, well, to search around every day and just hear about Jesus. And um, it's so amazing that it is a time of Advent, so it just changed because yeah. that's taking the most of it and just bringing the kingdom, and that's mm-hmm. what we're called to do. So, yeah, it's exciting days for the church, although it seems like dark days, but it is a time of advantageous change. Oh, yo, I've got a lot. <laughs> I <laughs> love it. I love it. The other day, I just woke up yesterday morning and I had, I had, I had this word in my heart, and I was like, um, "Be strong." Is it is it mm. Be strong and work. That scripture in, in, in Haggai about the shaking that takes place. And it was like the Lord saying, just you be strong and build build my temple. Build my keep on building the church. Keep on building and just be strong and continue working because I'm with you. Be courageous. Just you know, that's our focus. That's what God's called us to. And we need to focus on just doing what God has called yeah. us to do. Yeah, so right. yeah. Awesome. Good stuff. Awesome, awesome. See, just before you be, before you go, and yeah, Jen, thanks. Awesome. That's phenomenal. Yeah, I feel like you know. Okay, yeah, go. <laughs> so, I just want to say this quickly. Uh, Dave said this year yesterday. He said, within the context of Acts, uh, none of those guys they were going through the most horrific times. Attributed any of that as God's judgment. They were going through crazy things. But every time they looked for the opportunity to spread the gospel, to preach the resurrected Christ, to show forth the supernatural, uh, you know, they're walking through a yeah. gate and they yes. see a man, they say, we don't have much, but what we've got, we're going to give you. There's something about that. What do we have? You know, it's time for that, for the world to see that. The supernatural movement of God through his mm-hmm. body, not through just yeah. leaders, but through the full body mm-hmm. of Christ. I do believe it's time for that. So, T, go for it, man. So good. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, I totally agree. And uh, to <clears throat> hear the Apostle Paul saying, uh, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Uh, he had two options that, I, by the way, he said that sitting in, a, in, a, in, a, in the prison, and none of us here Christians are sitting in a prison, and our perspective sometimes is a little, you know, uh, interesting when you look at it from how spoiled we are, you know. I mean, the apostle had a death penalty in prison, and he's also um, uh, looking at his mission on the earth, and he looked at it as two great options. You know, he said, if I die, for me to die is gain. Because dying is not the worst thing that can happen to a Christian because to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. However, you know, I've been sharing this with those who are around me, that your chances of dying from uh, this disease without making light of it, you know, and uh, all the efforts that everyone is making, you have a greater chance of winning the lotto. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> then, you know, but that should have been the worst thing for you if you are a child of God, because guess what? Is there anything better than being reconciled with Jesus? I mean, it's the best thing that can happen to you. We sing songs about it, right? When we go to heaven, what a day that would be, you know? Oh, man. I mean, we, we look forward to these things. So we yeah. shouldn't fall apart. We shouldn't fold uh, in the face of, of danger, knowing that, you know, we have Jesus living on the inside of us and that, um, uh, for me, I feel, you know, the world needs to hear the gospel. The world needs to draw their hope uh, from Jesus and what he did on the cross. This is a perfect opportunity. I like what Jen said, Isaiah 60. This is a glorious opportunity for us to arise and shine. You know, yeah. as it gets darker. Uh, just a gleam of light makes the biggest, um, you know, and uh, I believe this is our time for us to share the good news of, of the gospel. Tell people that we have a heavenly father who's waiting to be reconciled to them. Tell them of what Jesus paid for on the cross. Just tell them of the glad tidings. There's just so much bad news right now. Uh, and I believe it's time for the good news. Jesus shared a story in John 3, which really is powerful. And it's befitting of what's going on today in John 3, uh, from verse 14 to 16. He was talking about how, you know, in the, old, in, in the Old Testament, Moses, when the plague of snakes came to bite the people, Moses was asked to make a brazen serpent. And he lifted it up. And uh, scripture said, uh, this is Jesus saying, he said that, 
uh, whoever looked up at the brazen serpent lived. And then he uh, uh, interpreted that as whoever believes in the Son of Man uh, shall have eternal life. And so what we need to be doing now is to be getting people's focus on the brazen serpent. You know, it's interesting that he used the brazen serpent to, 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 to be a metaphor for Jesus. Why? Because yeah. Jesus became the very thing that was tormenting them so that he could deliver them uh, from it. Remember, Scripture says he became sin uh, so that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. But nonetheless, we should be getting people's attention around onto Jesus. Scripture says... You know, whoever looks at the at the brazen serpent didn't die; they lived. Uh, mm. The instruction was never to look around and, at, you know, because when you when the snakes are biting, sometimes the temptation is to look at the bite. You know, <laughs> is it, uh, compare mm. bite. Sometimes it's to look around and say, "How big is your bite?" You know, mine is swelling up, and yours has got pass. Oh man, you're about to. It's, you know, the temptation is to. And uh, because of the news so media, there's been so much looking around. People are just looking around and, and they're getting false hope. You know, sometimes they say, oh, there's a vaccine that just runs. And then it turns out, oh, it was just uh, false hope. Oh, there's another one in Bulgaria. Oh, it's just uh, false hope. And I believe this is time for people to look at an eternal hope, a hope that never changes. Look at Jesus mm -hmm. who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He will never disappoint you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. So I believe as the body of Christ, as the, we have a great opportunity to point people to, to Jesus. Yeah, that's so good. Mm -hmm. I just want to that's read so this quickly. Uh, I've got some people just tuning in all the way from the Philippines. <laughs> Raphael was joining in there from the Philippines. Oh, it's good. We were in the Philippines a year ago, guys. Uh, wow, what an awesome time. Um uh, Lewinda says the following oh. about children. She says, um, yeah. what a time to teach our children to have an intimate relationship with Jesus. Families strong for the Lord in times to come. So exciting. Mm -hmm. I think that's so cool. What a time to teach our children to live a lifestyle that's so different mm -hmm. than, than anything yeah. else. Yeah. Um, so we are George all the way from Korea. George, we're praying for you guys. New outbreaks there. But we pray that God's going to lift his church like never before in Korea. So thanks for watching, guys. We really appreciate that. Thanks for all the comments coming through. And we appreciate you taking part in this broadcast today. I want to read something quickly, and I want to ask you guys about this. Uh, 1 John 1, from verse 5, said, This is the message which we have heard from Him and declare to you, that God is light, and Him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with Him, we, and we walk in darkness, we lie, and we practice no truth. If we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. So context here is walking in light. Uh, Acts 17 says, in him we live and move and have our being. There's something about that line being drawn right now. Those who are walking fully by faith. I know Tafara, you say that every Sunday after every service in all the churches. As we walk by faith and not by sight. A lot of people, and I think you touched on that, Jen, earlier, was that we don't have the full word. We, we've been asleep. And this, this has woken the church up. It said, guys, wake up. There's something to be done right now. We've been living as social clubs, uh, going to church, knowing friends, fellowship, singles go there to get, uh, get uh, a husband or a wife, you know, that kind of thing. It's just a nice vibe. And suddenly... Boom, we faced with a giant. <laughs> we faced with this giant as a church. And how how do we walk in that? What is some, some practical stuff that you guys want to just add? Um, I think it's a lot of people say, yeah, I want to live this way. What do we do? Um, I think, Jane, you had a lot to say earlier. So I think I'm going to give you some time to jump in now again. And uh, you and Stu, and then we go to Tafara. <laughs> sure, thanks, Sven. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I think in this time of stopping, um, one can then begin to see 
what do I really believe? Uh, I think that's an amazing thing is because uh, we've got all the little scriptures, we've got fridge magnets and uh, car bumper stickers. But it's amazing what uh, holds true is when the giant's on the floor and he's starting to intimidate and shout and mock. And uh, then you start seeing the whole lot of the, the, the brothers are hiding behind the rocks of religion and um, ritual. But it's the Davids who know Jesus, who've spent time with him, who worship, who pray, who, who actually, they didn't get on there and see Goliath. They kept on seeing God and they thought, Yo, this guy, honestly, uh, has never met God because his head's about to be removed. And, um, and so I think the time for the church to come out from behind religious rocks and rituals onto the fields of, of our lives, because we, we, like David, we know how to worship. Uh, we set our hearts before God, you know, and um, I think that's the thing for me is that uh, so many times uh, people have gone to church to see, can I get a good snack? Where's the best restaurant in town? Uh, who's got the best kids um, facility? So we can just have the, the nicest little um, consumer church experience and then go away. But David wasn't a consumer. He was somebody who knew how to worship. He knew God. And it didn't matter that he was looking after the sheep. It wasn't a distraction. It was in looking after the sheep that he still learned to worship and practice the very presence and purposes of God of, of shepherding, which was to, to drive away the threats to what was entrusted to him as sheep. So when he got into a national space, um, he saw this guy as another lion or bear. Uh, actually, this was, this was wrong. And I think too many Christians don't realize what's wrong. You know, and they, they look to the government or they look to... Somebody. And I think uh, for me, when I, I smell fear and I, I see the intimidation of the enemy and I realize we, the first place we're going to do is turn to God. Uh, I think what Tafaro was saying just now is looking at bites and looking at the size of the snakes. That's not going to save us. It's looking at Jesus and a genuine worship. It's not you know trying to throw out the right formula of, of two praise songs and one deep worship and, and half a minute of praying in the spirit. It's just connecting with the heart of God. It's finding our own hearts. Uh, thrilled with who Jesus is, peace coming from him into our hearts, and then responding. You know, I really believe this battle that we sing belongs to God. And he's and, and like Jehoshaphat, I really believe he's saying, find a vantage point and see what I'm going to do. But he first started out, that whole story started out with when the intimidation came and he, a fear gripped his heart. He was afraid. He turned to the Lord. And I think for Christians now, uh, you, you can't turn to somebody. You've got to turn to God, you know. And, yeah. and I think that's our, our greatest opportunity is to find the heart, the nature, and the face of Jesus. And, and then to step out. I'm, I'm, man, I think this is so awesome. God is so good to us that he would, he would set us from a whole lot of rubbish that we think has been important. And you start realizing what is important. That's and, it. Uh, and finding a depth of intimacy. So, so that's, that's what I'd encourage. Practically, just worship God and read scripture. Find, read the Old Testament. See how big God is. See that no nation, pestilence ever frightened God. He always is in control still today. And uh, this coronavirus is a name. It's not above the name of Jesus. And uh, get the name of Jesus, not as some uh, little formula on your lip or a vaccine, but as the, the most precious name that has power, that is absolutely beautiful and, and personal. And so we, we learn to know him in this season. So that's what I would encourage people to do. So good. Wow. That's powerful. Love it. And then, you, and then, I don't know, Sean, I don't know how much time we have, but um, I just want no, to add some something. Time. Is that right? Yeah, we're going to go till 11, <laughs> so you can have okay. time. <laughs> okay. And um, so, okay, so so we, um, what that really says is that this is like a sila moment for the, mm. for the church. It's a, I've heard um, Chris Vallison also saying this and, and a few other people on the board, so it's really a time it's a rest it's a time of just a pause and think about that and i think for us it's really a time as the body of christ to, to pause and think about our lives and um, i don't know if you remember like there used to be this teaching a few years ago where like, where you try and put add big big rocks into a jar that was already filled up with sand and um, to change things in your life and there's no way you can actually put all the sand and the big rocks if you um you have to put the big rocks into the jar first and then pour the sand in um to put everything in and get your priorities mm -hmm. right so i think 
this is like a big rock moment for us so we can actually reset and restart pour the sand and the rocks out of dark from the beginning and say what are my priorities what are the big things and um, how am i going to build and um, practically um govern my own family and my life for eternity and not just all the busyness that comes my way, take everything and try and shove it into one jar, but actually think about our lives going forward and be intentional. And Alana also said that it is a sealer moment for the church, and she said it is a serious, a serious moment for the church. Mm -hmm. So it is, yes, it is, it's not fearful in the sense of being afraid like everybody else's, but it is, it's serious in the sense of we need yes. to actually realize we have this incredible awesome God mm -hmm. that we need to revere and worship and we fall down at his feet and we worship him and that's the kind of God that we serve and to actually with him in mind um so far you spoke about it um with him in full view um, the word like Psalm say come and magnify the Lord with me when you magnify something you put a full focus on and you exalt and you make that thing big in your mind in your life so for us it's a time to magnify the biggest thing. So we encourage our guys to put on worship music now and then fill their homes with worship and um, to be lifting Jesus up, as you said, Tafari, to be exalting Jesus above everything. Um, so this is really a time to magnify the Lord and with Him in focus, we can put those rocks back in and say, okay, how are we going to change our lives and build intentionally so that the kingdom of God comes first, mm -hmm. not for the pastors or the leaders, for every single believer, for the body of Christ. Now you're going to see the body of Christ. Yeah. Now you're going to see the body of Christ in action like you have never seen this magnificent, magnificent beauty that has been designed. Now is the time you're going to see the body of Christ <laughs> shine like never before. <laughs> it's our time to shine. The amazing thing is that God wants us to shine. Yeah. And you, if you, it's a, it says the glory of the Lord rises upon you. So we reflect yeah. his glory. Yeah. It's like his glory is rising. We're shining. We're like yeah. mirrors in the sun. And we're, like, we're, sh we're reflecting the glory of God that's right on us, and it's so evident in the darkness of the world. Yeah. So I'm excited to see this incredible beauty that God has been is awakening yeah. to rise and shine in this time. And, um, and the awesome thing, I think, this is what I'm looking forward to, is there was a medical doctor to um, he got to work with terminally ill people and that was basically what he enjoyed the most because he said there were so many other people that came to and they were just <laughs> and he didn't want to deal you know but then he started working with people that realized they had like so much left, so much time left and he said that the nonsense was gone and he said they were just real and they were just the best people and I think this is a good shaking out of the nonsense. <laughs> yeah. And we actually realize, oh, we're all, all terminal. You know, we're all going to die. And it's, it's, we're going to be with Jesus, as you said so far. But mm -hmm. we can live with that in mind. And we're not like living like morbidly, but it's so full of life. Because look at it, we have waiting for us. And, and it's, not all, it's not all about this life. And it's not, mm -hmm. this is not the be all and the end. Or there's, there's this incredible future that we have in God. So to live and to build with eternity in mind, yeah, that's sure. that's our next mind setting, heart setting, going Love into more. the next season. It's good. Love Come it. Love it. Powerful. T, you go. Yeah, and just to add in as well, I, I believe, you know, just there's just so much going on and sometimes also from a religious perspective, there's just so much going on and... Uh, people are, have been sending me forwards and uh, audios and some of them are just full of gloom and doom. And it's almost like people have lost perspective that God is still on the throne. He's still the, he's still the, he's still the ruler. He's still God. Come on. You know, people Come have on. lost perspective that, you know, we, we teach a lot on grace and we teach about how Jesus came as the lamp uh, uh, that taketh away the sin of the world. Uh, but people forget that the same one who came as the lamb is also coming back as the lion of the tribe. Come of on. So, I mean, he's not, God is not a wimp. Jesus is not a wimp. They're going to take care of business. <laughs> so for us children of God, man, 
I mean, I get people forward to me all kinds of gloom and gloom. You know, it's almost like they look at everything in the natural and they think that's all there is. But we know that there's a higher authority. Come on. And that mm-hmm. higher authority is God. When the children of Israel got to the Red Sea, I mean, it was doom and gloom, but God still had the way out, right? Yeah. Parted the Red Whoa. Sea and they walked on dry uh, ground. And I believe, you know, if we just keep our minds on God and really realize that, yeah, we, we have a, an authority that Jesus has given us to rebuke yeah. this thing. But ultimately, man, God is still going to take care of business. He's still going to make a way for his children. They still, you know, it doesn't matter what your end time, you know, persuasion is. The, the, the bottom line is it all comes down to this. We are safe as God's children. There's nothing to That's us. it. Good. Yeah. Come on. I love that too. So good. I love that. You know, I'm reminded of a story because uh, I lived it. But oh. when we were kids, we we didn't have a lot of money. Uh, being in ministry, my dad uh, and the church and stuff. There was there was not a lot um, in a little town called Malmesbury. Uh, but at that time period, we didn't realize we were poor. You know, when you're there, you don't think you're that poor. You just think, hey, it's life. <laughs> but um, there were a few times that I invited all my friends home, and <laughs> my parents didn't have much. Um, they would have one box of macaroni and maybe a half a packet of mints uh, with, with a little bit of cheese. And I invited six, seven teenagers, guys, you know how much teenagers eat, uh, back home from the hostel, oh my and my parents were like, "My God, you need what to help doing, us here." <laughs> and uh, what happened is, uh, f- uh, quite a few times, and I will never forget this. One of the stories where my parents wow. didn't l- want to leave the lid off because they didn't want to see how much was left in the pot, and we ate an entire weekend on one pot of, Come of on. macaroni and he, as a bunch of teenage boys with my parents wow. and my sister in a house, <laughs> our God multiplied. I've seen it many times. Oh. Um, and there was no other food. You know, when we go on a missions trip or we go out into, into Africa or wherever in the part of the world you are, we trust God for the supernatural. Natural. We trust him to show up in a way like never before. We trust that we won't get sick. We trust that there will be food. We trust that people are going to get saved. We trust. We root ourselves and fill our minds with the presence of God. But when we come back to our comfort zone, where we have a, a, a proper toilet, a proper shower, mm-hmm. our bed, uh, our, we're just so scared that willies will close down that we uh, we go into prayer sessions uh, but what about a generation that comes to a place that truly believes that we trust God more than we trust our monetary uh, value that we in our hand uh, the economy anything else that goes around us the grocery store the grocery mm-hmm. cupboard mm-hmm. we trust him with everything cool. inside us, that we believe we will not get sick, we will not be without. Yeah. If you can send a prophet to a widow that's picking up sticks, that is making her last meal, and says that she will take care of you, why can't we trust the same? Why can't we stand on the word in the same way, in a season and a time such as this, to show yeah. the world our God is alive? We're not yeah. just worshipping a dead, fat, old Bali that's sitting somewhere so in, a, in a little room or a guy with a very long beard. No, we're serving a God that is alive. He's the Lion of Judah and he's alive in our life. Right? Come on. Anyway, I'm just stop <laughs> preaching. Yeah, but yeah. I'm so excited so to be alive yeah. right now, right? So it's what a time. Yeah. What a time. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. I love it. And, and, and just to just to show the world the goodness of our Heavenly Father. You know, he's a, he's a good father, you know, like Stu said right at the beginning. Oh, God, God is not the one that sent this plague. I saw people, people can be weird. I saw someone just literally pick a scripture from Isaiah. I think it's Isaiah 26, 20. Just kind of isolate it and just put it out there and say God's wrath is, you know, you know, like we said at the beginning, his wrath was expired by the payment and the, uh, Jesus dying on the cross. And uh, beyond that, I mean, God is just a good, good father. 
you know, Scripture says in Hebrews 1.3, Jesus is the express image of the Father. You know, see God, you could look at Jesus here on the earth and you would definitely see how God would have responded to every situation. So God would have fed the 5,000 if they were hungry. God would have provided for the people that were in need. God would have healed the lepers. God would have... Uh, um, you know, uh, healed the blind. God would have said the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I came that you more abundantly. Amen. So at no yeah. point in Jesus' ministry, who is the exact representation of God, do we see him using sickness, leprosy, or a virus or a bacteria to try and uh, teach someone a lesson? He doesn't do those things. He comes yeah. to heal. By the way, he had several opportunities. Remember in John 4, you met this woman. We had like five husbands and uh, she's the sixth one that she, she was with wasn't even his. I mean, it was a perfect opportunity uh, for bringing his judgment, right? And strike him with something. <laughs> he left uh, with on. lightning or something. Hey, yeah, but God doesn't do that. Jesus extends mercy, love, grace and empowers it to actually become a preacher. So, I mean, you know, God is a good father. He is not the yeah. one that's sending. I think we need to just settle this once and for all. This mm. virus, no virus, no bacteria, no sickness that comes from, from God. Only the yeah. good, every good and perfect Amen. gift yeah, come that on. Yeah, comes yeah. from above, you know, from the Father yeah. of lights with whom there is no variableness or shadow of turning. So, if there is one thing I could also... Uh, uh, encourage people to settle in their hearts, it is to know that uh, this is not from God. It's not the doing of the Lord. Uh, yes. It's the doing of the devil, and we should resist it, and it will flee away yes. from us. There is no if, so but it's guaranteed yes. it's not from God. Amen. Yes. That's good. Amen. Absolutely. Agree. For sure. Yeah. I just, I mean, so, Jesus, came, you. He said Jesus came to give us life and life in abundance. Yeah. And that's his heart. I mean, you know, I had to go out and pop out to the Shazam thing and just coming back and just like driving past, you feel the heart, you feel the atmosphere and you just feel the heart of the Father for every single person. Mm -hmm. um, saved and not saved, you just, the heart of the Father is just just for life and for for blessing over people and and that's why he wants to reconcile all men to himself through jesus because he wants to show his just pour out his goodness yeah. on us and yeah you know, so that his heart his heart is for the lost mm. for the broken yeah. for the sick his heart is expressed through the through the body of christ and and so yeah it's just his heart is exactly what you said, Tafara. It's like, it's for people, it's for people to be saved. Yeah. And, and yeah, he's not judging us. He's, he wants to draw us to himself. Yeah. Can, yeah. Amen. Sure. Just, uh, it looks like on the screen, looks like we follow the matrix there. I don't know if it's uh, <laughs> a little yeah. bit, but it's okay. We've got, we got special graphics yeah. there. Oh, good, man. <laughs> but, but I want to say this. I think Jen mentioned this on Sunday. Maybe I, I just intro it to cheat. I think what people do is they look in the natural and we get caught up in the natural so that we respond naturally. But we are not called to be a natural people. We're called to live yeah. from heaven to earth. That's how Jesus encouraged us to pray. Let your kingdom, an unseen realm, that's more powerful, superior, eternal, never ending, break into this inferior, um, uh, mortal realm so that the unseen can be made manifest. And so I think what's happening is, um, is there are things happening in the spiritual realm that the church doesn't even see or sometimes we're not even aware of because we're so overwhelmed by the things around us. So I think what Jane said um, uh, around Jesus coming, in the spiritual atmosphere, there was an understanding even by the devil who's not omnipresent and not omnipotent, but he yeah. was discerning enough to know something's about to go down. He was seeing in the activity in the spiritual realm. So he goes and does what? He goes and kills all the kids. He yeah. goes and tries to get rid of the promise that was breaking forth because he smelled something. So I don't know if Jen wants to share something more on that, but I was like so touched by that because I just realized, man, with all the stuff that's happening at a net, we've never seen this in my lifetime, this global thing. 
Ah, oh, it's because God's doing something globally. There's a revival that is brewing. The devil can see it, and then we must get distracted. You know, we respond by the Spirit. We are led by the Spirit. But boy, oh boy, salvation <laughs> is a break. You know, so that I, I want to just awesome. that, that's an encouragement. You know, is, is listen to what Spirit is saying. Don't get caught up with the natural, because then we're not going to be able to represent or talk about the unseen. We're going to just regurgitate, or regurgitate, sorry, the, the natural um, from a Christian point of view and, and try and be good Christians with clean hands and the sanitized um, feet. You know? um, no, we actually should be, we, we should be completely, completely understanding of the sound of the Spirit and declaring yeah. that. I think God's going to do something, you know? Absolutely. No, he is doing, he's doing something. And the, he's doing the something can, right now. The devil can yeah. see it. That's why he's doing what he's trying to do. And God is so phenomenally amazing that people honestly think he orchestrated it. That's how brilliant he is. Uh, and actually, you know, the devil tries to do something. God makes everything good. And yeah. uh, it looks like he, you know, he's just so good at what he does um, that people think he was the author of it. No, he's the finisher of it in such beauty and divine power. That uh, we well wow, but look at what you've done. So I, I really, I want to, uh, you know, I, I'm, I just sit to that thing from what Jen said because Jen, as she said it, my heart it exploded. That um, man, there is a revival. We hear a billion soul harvest. I really yeah. believe the devil believes it more than most of the church. You know, when you when sure. Tafara saying doom and gloom, are getting bad, the devil believes the spiritual atmosphere of a billion soul harvest. So I'm saying, Lord, what we do. And then we see um, one of the guys in our church seeing five little kids come to Christ, trusting for the family. What about all of us? It is now to see a harvest happen. Let's look for that and let's not get caught up in the natural. So good. So good. Well, guys, thank you for an amazing hour. It's been incredible. Uh, I do like every comment coming through you. People have just been loving it. People are saying thank you that we're taking time to uh, put this out every morning and, and just uh, people can be encouraged and hear a good word. I definitely, I'm going away today feeling fired up. And I just I want to pray for every dog running past me, uh, every person that I might see in the distance, uh, just whatever, just whatever that is, just living in the fullness of what he's got for us as church it's time yeah. to be alive and truly yes. see what the father is is doing and thank you for yes. everyone i saw uh, ryan tuned in and was also listening ryan's going to be on to with us tomorrow with jd we're going to be talking tomorrow as well and uh um, your connect from korea as well thank you for she said this nice statement let's we'll get it quickly um she said where is this now uh, I can't find it. She was just saying how amazing a, a church in lockdown is breaking down walls and reaching the world. And uh, what is this? This How amazing. How amazing. to And what a great time to be alive. So, guys, thank you for taking time to be here. Enjoy Joburg. Enjoy your families. Send love to everybody. Uh, we appreciate you guys so much. And then join us tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock uh, with uh, Ryan Rufus and J.D. Becker. Be with us tomorrow as well. So we thank you guys for that and uh, have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thanks.